I'd like to encourage everyone this morning to take a Bible, follow along with me from God's Word. And if you have your Bibles handy, I'm going to invite you to find in the Old Testament, the book of Nehemiah, chapter 4. We're going to be there in just a little while. But before we get to that, let me say this as well, because this is something also that we do a little bit differently here at Beach than maybe you have seen in other congregations. And that is that at the conclusion of this lesson... We're going to have an invitation song. That's probably not unusual. Congregation is going to stand and sing during that song. If you're here this morning and would like to get your life right with God, don't come forward. If you'd like to do that, go backwards. Go back to the foyer. I'm going to be back there. Let me know that you'd like to talk. We'll sit down together, go to one of the classrooms where we can talk privately, find out what it is that you've got on your mind and what it is that you need to do this morning to be right with God. And so that's going to be at the conclusion of the lesson that's going to be during that song. Don't be afraid to take that opportunity. And now you've got some time to think about that in the course of the lesson. This morning, this morning is a special morning. Today is a special day. As a matter of fact, today is probably one of the highlights of our entire year here at North Beach. Because tonight, we start our Vacation Bible School. And I understand that sometimes Vacation Bible School isn't emphasized a whole lot, but we at Beach have historically put a great deal of emphasis on our Vacation Bible School. And I will say this, that emphasis has actually been growing over the course of the last several years. It is a special week. It is a busy week. It's really hard to escape what's going on because if you walk out in the hallway, you see a tree and a beehive and those you do not normally see in our hallway. And if you walk down the hall and poke your head in some of the classrooms, you'll see some things that are going on in there as well. VBS is a special week. A lot of planning goes into this week. The elders begin planning for this months ago as they choose topics and decide how that's all going to work. And then a lot of other work goes into that as well. And typically, on the Sunday when we start VBS, I usually like to talk in the morning a little bit about VBS. And so that's what I'm going to do this morning. And if you're sitting out there, and if you've been at Beach for a while, and you say, well, what Stephen had to say this morning sounds awfully familiar, well, yes, it does. And I freely admit that. Because there are some things I think that are good for us as a congregation to understand and to remember going into this week. And so in the time that I have, I'd like for us to spend a little bit of time talking about what's so special about VBS and why is there such an emphasis on it here at Beach. And so hopefully you got your Bibles handy. We are going to look at some passages from God's Word because I think God's Word has some things to say about what it is we're doing. The first thing I think that's so special about VBS and something that we need to remember is that VBS is a real group effort. There are some things that we do here at North Beach that are really not a group effort. It's not a group effort when I choose what I'm going to preach on on Sunday and when I prepare my lesson. It's not a group effort when a Bible class teacher gets his class ready. It's not a group effort when two times a year I do a special community lecture on a Bible topic. Those are things that are far more individual. VBS, though, is different because VBS really requires a group effort. It requires all of us, or at least as many of us as is possible, to be involved. If you were there in Nehemiah chapter 4, I'd invite you to find verse 6. Something that we should note about what happened when Nehemiah had returned to Israel and they were building the walls of Jerusalem. So we built the wall, the text tells us, and all the wall was joined together to half its height. For the people had a mind to work. Nehemiah was able to engineer, oversee the building of the walls of Jerusalem. And they were able to accomplish that incredible feat because the people had a mind to work. The people of Jerusalem recognized that they needed to have walls. And if we're going to have walls, we're going to have to 
get busy. We're going to have to work at that. It's going to take an effort. VBS is like that, of course, in a much smaller scale because we're not building walls. But VBS is like that in that we as a congregation have to have a mind to work. Now, I understand that maybe this lesson should have been preached four weeks ago or five weeks ago before we did a lot of the preparation work. But if you're sitting out there this morning and saying, well, all that's already been done. After all, we have the tree and we have the beehive there in the hallway. Rest assured, there is lots of work still to be done. I remember last year at VBS, just to give this a little bit of perspective, last year at VBS, we had an influx of children that we did not expect. Teachers had made preparations in their room. Teachers had enough of the things that they were giving out for their students in that classroom, the, you know, the little teaching aids, coloring sheets, and things like that, that went along with the lesson. Lo and behold, lo and behold, we had a lot of folks come in that we had not expected. So, and you really got to understand how how we were dragging the, how we were scraping the bottom of the barrel with this one. I was in the workroom cutting papers out. Pat was back there with me. Pat's good at cutting papers out. Stephen Baxley is not good at cutting papers out. Okay. I flunked out of that part of kindergarten, I'm pretty sure. There was lots of work to be done. I think Drew was putting some swords together or something last year as well. There will be work to do all week long. And so if you're looking at all the decorations, you're saying, well, it's all done. Oh, no, it's not. There will be work yet to be done tonight. There will be work yet to be done tomorrow night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night as well. VBS, VBS is a real group effort. And it gives us, it gives us an opportunity to serve. Take your Bibles and go with me, if you would, over to Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10 and verse 2, notice what Jesus here says in Luke chapter 10 and verse 2, after he has sent the 72 out, he says to them in verse 2 of Luke chapter 10, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. We look at Luke chapter 10 and verse 2, and we understand Luke chapter 10 and verse 2 in the context of evangelists, preachers, and that's correct. And we look at Luke chapter 10 and verse 2 in the context of evangelism of us as individuals, and that is correct. Can I suggest to you this morning that we ought to look at this also in the context of working in the local church. There is always more work to be done than workers who are available to do the work. Can I suggest to you this morning that here at Beach, there are plenty of things we could do if we had more folks that were willing to work. And by the way, I am not, that is not meant to be a negative statement. We got a lot of folks who are really busy in a lot of things, but we find in VBS that we get an extraordinary opportunity to serve. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later in the lesson. If you'll take your Bibles and go over to Colossians chapter one, in Colossians chapter one, VBS as a group effort also presents us with an opportunity to bear fruit. Colossians chapter one, verses nine and 10. This is what Paul writes to the saints in Colossae. And he says to them, and so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. VBS is an opportunity for us collectively in that group effort to bear fruit for the kingdom. I will tell you, I am probably not going to do a very good job this morning of expressing how important VBS is, but I'm going to do the best I can to get that across. What's so special about VBS? VBS is special because VBS is great for our children. If you will take your Bibles and go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 6. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, we're going to read together here verses 4 through 9. We understand from the scriptures that we are to teach our children about God. Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting in verse 4, this is in the Old Testament. 
Notice what we read here. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. We're probably very familiar with verse 5. It's probably been taught to many of us as a memory verse, even in childhood. Now notice verse 6. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. God's people were instructed to tell future generations about what God had done. And so maybe I can picture some Jewish man with his son or maybe a Jewish mother with her daughter and they happen to be going near the banks of the Jordan River and they might mention, you know, what happened here. And how important that was as God parted the waters of the Jordan River. And you know what? That was an awful lot like how God poured it, parted the waters of the Red Sea. This is what God did for us. VBS is special because VBS is going to be an opportunity for our children to learn about things that God has done. In addition to that, they're going to learn about some faithful examples of following God. Look with me, if you would, in Romans chapter 15. In Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. In Romans chapter 15 and verse 4, notice what Paul says here. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4, he says, For whatever was written in former days... <clears throat> was written for our instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Sometimes I have encountered Christians who have said, don't need to be studying the Old Testament. That's not important. Brothers and sisters, Paul would beg to differ. The Old Testament is important. That's what he talks about here. Can I suggest to you that we as Christians now with a completed written New Testament get to learn about some other folks who served and followed God. And so this week, this week in the time that we have, we're going to look at some faithful examples. And if you want to know who we're going to look at, look at that big poster out there in the foyer. They are four of the, uh, four of the ones that we're going to look at are depicted there. People who demonstrated being faithful examples of following God. So our children will get to hear about things that God has done. Our children will get to hear about unsung heroes of the faith. Some of the ones that we don't usually think about. It's great for our children because this knowledge is to be passed on to the next generation. Take your Bibles. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to read two passages here in 2 Timothy. We're going to start in chapter 3 and then we're going to go back to chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Look with me if you would at verses 14 and 15. But as for you, Paul says, he's writing to Timothy. It's a, it's, a, it's a direct letter, a personal letter to a young Christian named Timothy. And he says to him, but as for you... Continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom, and by the way, if you have an ESV, there's a footnote there that says it is plural. Indeed it is. It isn't always clear in English, but it is in the Greek. From whom, plural, you learned it. And how from childhood, verse 15, you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Paul talks to Timothy and he says to Timothy, you need to remember who you've learned about God from. And you need to remember that you have understood and been taught the scriptures. You've been exposed to the scriptures from childhood. Now let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. At the beginning of this letter, Paul says this, I am reminded, Timothy, of your sincere faith. A faith that, that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, now I am sure dwells in you as well. Absent here is Timothy's father, because Timothy's father was a pagan. Timothy's father wasn't teaching Timothy about God's word. Instead, it was his mother and his grandmother 
who were teaching him. Parents, can I say this? This is not a lesson on parenting, but hey, why not? We can add something in there to it. We spend a lot of time teaching our kids how to do things. Some of those are pretty important. Walking's pretty important. Talking's pretty important. And then we get beyond those things and we start teaching them some other things in life that we view as important. Can I suggest to you this morning, no, I'm not going to suggest it, I'm going to say it a little bit more firmly than that. The most important thing we can impart to our children is a knowledge of God and His Word. If they go to Harvard University, good for them. If they don't go to any university, that's fine as well. But if we fail as parents to teach them about God, we have failed in the most important job God has given to us in blessing us with whatever children He has blessed us with. And I understand that not everybody is a parent. But those of us that are, take upon a responsibility. Grandparents, can I say this? It wasn't just Timothy's mother that was involved in that. It was a grandmother as well. This whole idea that I have heard before, not at Beach, that we'll just raise our children and maybe they'll find God eventually on their own, is rubbish. We have a responsibility, God-given, God-ordained, for which we are responsible to teach our children about God. And so this week in VBS, what we get is we get four really good opportunities for our children to do exactly that. In addition to the other opportunities that we have here, those Bible classes that we teach so regularly. But this is something that I suspect, and I'm not going to ask our little ones for hands, but if I were to ask our little ones to raise their hands if they're excited about VBS, I suspect most of them would raise their hands. Because VBS is kind of exciting. It's a way to learn about God's Word in an exciting way. VBS is special because VBS is great for our children. But VBS is special for another reason, and this is one I want us to dwell on a little bit. VBS is special for another reason, and that is because VBS involves evangelism in the community. And this is maybe something we don't think about a whole lot. We think about VBS as something we do. But brothers and sisters, VBS is really something that we do to reach the community. And we've done, we've done a fantastic job over the last several years. Visitors, I'm not trying to make you think we're tooting our own horn. I'm tooting the horn of the congregation. We have done a fantastic job over the last several years of reaching the community. VBS is an excellent, excellent opportunity to invite others. Take your Bibles and go with me one last passage this morning, and that's in John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, let's read together verses 43 through 46. John chapter 1, 43 through 46. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I've heard about that town. There's no way anybody good's coming out of there. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. And that phrase has been used a whole lot to talk about come and see evangelism. I even have a lesson that I preach on come and see evangelism. And that's true and that's important. But what he is being invited to do is come and check out Jesus for himself. This week, starting tonight, we have an opportunity to invite other people. Now, I will tell you, I hope we've already been doing that. I hope we've already been passing out cards. We have little cards. We have big cards. I hope we've been sharing Facebook posts. I hope we've been doing that. Brothers and sisters, if we have not been doing that, I got good news for you. Skip the nap after lunch and invite. Invite people you know uh, to come to our VBS. Because it is an excellent opportunity to do exactly that. 
I'm about to make a statement, and I want you to think with me about this. Because I did, as I added it to my notes and decided I want to make sure it was an accurate statement. I'm going to suggest to you this morning that VBS is an event in which we will have more visitors during this week than at any other single event that we do. More visitors than we have at our lectures, more visitors than we have at our singings, and more visitors that we have in our worship services. And if you're sitting out there right now saying, well, wait a minute, last time we had a singing, we had like 50 or 60 people here. And you're right. That's about how many we had. And 95% of them were all members of other congregations. What will happen this week is we will have numerous visitors. I'm not going to make a prediction. But we will have numerous visitors. Remember, I was back cutting papers out last year. We will have numerous visitors who are not members of the Lord's church. Who will walk in those doors and they will spend time with us this week in the classes, in the things that will happen here in the auditorium. Far more than we get at any other single event. Most of y'all know that when I do the two lectures a year, I put a lot of effort into that. I believe in those community lectures. And we've had visitors that have come in because of that. 10, 12, 15 who are not members of the Lord's church. That will be nothing compared to VBS. We will see all sorts of children that will come in those doors that we have never seen before. And in addition to that, Something we do here at Beach that's also kind of unique is we have classes for the big people too. We have classes for us. We have classes for adults. We'll all be here in the auditorium. And each night, starting the night, a different man will bring a lesson. So here mom and dad will come, or maybe mom will come, or maybe dad will come, and they'll bring their kids to VBS. And guess what? If they choose to drop them off and leave, we'll take their contact information and they can go. We're not going to tell them they got to stay. But you can bet we're going to invite them. we got a class in the auditorium too. Wouldn't you like to come in there and join us? And brothers and sisters, many will. Very few kids get dropped off and left. So adults will be exposed as well to the gospel of Christ. Maybe they would never have come in those doors, but their children wanted to go to VBS and they brought them. And let me say this to our children. VBS is an incredible opportunity to invite your friends to come to VBS. There's something about VBS that just people have a, a warm feeling towards VBS. I don't know why that is. We've been running Facebook ads for our VBS. And we've had a whole lot of people that have hit that like button. And a whole lot of people hit that love button. A couple of people left comments that I had to delete. That happens every time. But most of it has been overwhelmingly positive. And you know what else we've had? And this is mind-boggling to me. When we do an event like that, I expect all of y'all who are on Facebook to share the event. I expect that. If you haven't done that, you've got time. Skip the nap. Share the VBS information on Facebook. It's amazing to me how many people have seen the ad, liked the event, and, are you ready for this? Shared it themselves to people who none of us even have any contact with. It's something about VBS that people just, I don't know, they feel differently about it. What's so special about VBS? VBS is a great opportunity. As a matter of fact, when it comes right down to it, I can't think of anything negative to say about VBS. I can't think of any detraction to take away from it because it is such a wonderful event and it starts tonight. And if you're out there this morning and you're saying, well, I don't have kids that need to go to VBS, so I don't need to go to VBS. Remember, we've got an adult class. There's a good reason right there. Or if you're sitting there saying, I don't need to go to VBS because I don't have kids. Rest assured, we'll put you to work tonight. You may be getting to cut out papers instead of me because, trust me, those kids didn't like the papers I cut out. There'll be lots of opportunities to serve 
during this week. So I hope that we're all planning to do that, to take advantage of this opportunity to reach out to our own membership, to teach our children, and to reach out to the community around us. If you were here this morning, as I indicated at the beginning of this lesson, we're going to have a song that Andrew is going to lead us in. The number is up there on the board, but it will be on the screen behind me, and it is already showing up here, Andrew, for you. If you are here this morning and have never obeyed the gospel of Christ, that is the most important thing you could possibly do today. Have your sins washed away in baptism so that you can come up out of that water a new creature in Christ, living a new life. If you'd like to do that this morning, the congregation is going to stand and sing a song. When they do that, I'm going to go back to the foyer. Come see me there. We'll talk together. You can do that now while we stand and while we sing.